What is a king? A king is the male ruler of an independent state, especially one who inherits the position by right of birth. That's too literal. I want to know what a king represents. What does he symbolize? A king symbolizes power, strength. He's a leader, someone who won't back down from the challenges put in front of them. However, those are just traits of a king. How does one identify a king? What stands out? The crown. No, not that one. This one. The crown itself represents everything a king should possess. Power, strength, and leadership. But that doesn't mean the king is worthy of their place. The crown does not make the king. This also works the other way around. Felix Hernandez, King Felix, one of the most dominant pitchers of the past 20 years. He's regarded as a king despite never reaching the playoffs with the team he's known from, never receiving his crown. However, this does not alter his status as king. Today, I will be talking about the ascent from Felix Hernandez to King Felix, and how despite his lack of playoff experience, he is worthy of his title. Before I begin this story, I would like to thank Stark Raving Sports for inviting me to come on the channel. Remember to subscribe to them, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you came to my channel, Sportstorm, and checked out some of the videos there. Alright, onto the video. Felix Abraham Graham Hernandez Garcia was born on April 8, 1986 in Valencia, Venezuela, a large metropolitan city in the mountains. Growing up in Venezuela, his parents were adamant that Felix never looks down on others and that he treats everyone with kindness and respect. The first step to being a great king. You may be surprised as to how he was initially dubbed as King Felix. Well, it begins when Hernandez was 14. He was playing in a tournament in Venezuela when a part-time Seattle Mariner scout, Luis Fuenmayor, spotted him. What he saw was a 14-year-old who was throwing 90 miles per hour. This scout knew he was watching someone special. As soon as Felix turned 16, the Mariners signed him to the organization. In 2002, when Hernandez graduated high school, the Mariners signed Hernandez to his first professional contract with a signing bonus of $710,000. Interestingly, Seattle was not the highest bidder. The Yankees and Braves had reportedly made higher offers, but Felix chose the Mariners for a couple of reasons. After the Mariners found Felix at age 14, they kept in touch with him until he turned 16. The Mariners distinguished themselves not in financial resources, but in personal commitment, a trait that Felix seemed attracted to and one that he reflects constantly. It also helped that the Mariners had notable Venezuelan talent in the big leagues, including Carlos Guillen and Felix's idol, Freddy Garcia, who is the reason why Felix wears number 34. Clearly, Felix values loyalty and team culture above all else. Money is not of the same importance. His development into King is only growing stronger. So, what is the origin of the name King Felix? It goes back to July 17, 2003, a little over a year after Hernandez signed his first professional contract. On this date, a comment was posted in response to a blog post written on USS Mariner, a blog devoted to the Mariner's organization. The first sentence of this comment? All hail King Felix. Former USS Mariner author Dave Cameron, now a data analyst for the San Diego Padres, knows that it was either him or a fellow blog author, Jason Barker, who actually coined the nickname first, but the timing and original idea is lost to fuzzy memories. In short, King Felix came from a comment on a blog post. Who would have thought that it would take off the way it did? At first, the name bothered Felix. He was taught at an early age to not look down on others, and well, many kings have a reputation of doing that. It also put unneeded pressure on him for success. This was a teenager who was sent to Everett, Washington to play baseball, a completely foreign environment to Valencia, Venezuela. He was learning English by watching cartoons on TV. At the time, Felix was scared. His mom told him, well, you decided to do this, so you have to pay the price. Now, go out and be good. In the minors, Hernandez dominated the competition. At age 17, he went through both low A and single A, dominating both levels. Next season, despite only two starts in single A, he went through both high A and double A. You know what he did? He crushed the competition. Before the 2005 season, Baseball America had ranked him as the number two prospect in the nation. Who was ranked number one? Joe Maurer. By mid-season in triple A, despite missing a month of play with shoulder inflammation, Felix was ready for the big leagues. So on August 4, 2005, at age 19, three years after signing his professional contract, Felix made his debut. 
The Mariners lost the game 3-1, but in his next start, Felix threw 8 shutout innings in a 1-0 win against the Twins. Over his next several starts, he went through a streak of 112 batters before he gave up his first extra base hit. He finished the season in the majors with a 4-4 record, 77 strikeouts, and a 2.67 ERA in 84 and a third innings pitch, so he wasn't eligible to win the Rookie of the Year in his second season. Though he didn't end the year without adding to the trophy cabinet, as Felix won PCL Rookie of the Year and PCL Pitcher of the Year for his half season in AAA. It was only a matter of time before he added some big league trophies to that cabinet. He struggled in his first full season in 2006. He battled shin splints in spring training, which prompted the Mariners later in the season to limit his innings to 200 for the entire season. His stats weren't great, but he did throw a shutout in a game that lasted only 1 hour and 51 minutes, the shortest in Safeco Field history. In 2007, Hernandez was given the opening day start, where he pitched 8 innings, allowed only 3 hits, and threw a career-high 12 strikeouts in a 4-0 victory against the Athletics. His next start would throw him in the national spotlight, as he faced the Boston Red Sox in a much-hyped duel against Dasuke Matsuzaka. Hernandez threw seven no-hit innings, finishing the game with a one-hit complete game shutout in a 3-0 victory. An elbow injury hindered Hernandez mid-season, but he still ended the season with much improvement from his previous year. 2008 also saw a lot of improvement for Hernandez, along with a few notable achievements. On June 17th against the Florida Marlins, he became the 13th American League pitcher in history to throw an immaculate inning, where he struck out the side on 9 straight pitches. On his very next start on June 23rd against Johan Santana and the New York Mets, in his only at-bat of the season, Felix hit his first career Major League home run which just so happened to be a grand slam, the first by an American League pitcher since 1971. Hernandez ended the season with a perfect 4,000 slugging percentage. In 2009 would be the beginning of something special. He started the season with a 4-0 record, but would fall in a slump in May as he went 1-4. Mariners manager Don Wakamatsu would call out Hernandez publicly, saying he needed to step up to be the ace of this team. Hernandez would take his words to heart. He would be the AL Pitcher of the Month in June, and he earned his first All-Star appearance in July. By season's end, he finished with one of the best records in the league, finishing second in American League Cy Young voting as a result. Of course, Kings don't take losses lightly. In 2010, he had the best season of his career up to that point. In fact, before the season, he signed a 5-year, $78 million extension. He accomplished a lot in 2010. On June 3rd, he struck out 4 batters in 1 inning, becoming only the 3rd Mariner to accomplish that. Something a little more notable, he won the Cy Young Award, despite not even making the All-Star team. He led the league in ERA, quality starts, and was 2nd in strikeouts. While he was still a great player in 2011, he still took a noticeable step back, though he wasn't excluded from the All-Star game this time around. With 204 strikeouts on the season, this was his third straight 200 strikeout season. Between 1991 and 2011, only three other pitchers had done this before their age 25 season, those three being Clayton Kershaw, Kerry Wood, and Giovanni Gallardo. King Felix was now on that list. Now, I can't talk about 2011 without talking about the creation of King's Court, a special section of Safeco Field devoted to cheering on Hernandez. If there is a marquee matchup or a big important game in which Hernandez pitches, there is another section added in the upper deck directly above the King's Court. These sections are called the High Court. At first, Felix wasn't sure he would like this as he is a superstitious person. Now, he doesn't mind when he's called King. 2012 was a step up for Hernandez. He led the league in FIP for the only time in his career and lowered his ERA, allowing him to make the All-Star team and finish 4th in Cy Young voting. Of course, I can't talk about 2012 without mentioning this moment. Two. He got him! 34 years! 119 games! It's finally happened! A perfect game by a Seattle Manor! It was done by the King! Felix Hernandez! Yes, on August 15th, 2012, Hernandez threw the first perfect game in Mariners history, which is also the most recent perfect game in MLB history. In this game, he recorded 12 strikeouts, 5 of which were in the last 2 innings. All in all, it's one of the most rare accomplishments in baseball, and on that day, King Felix signed his name into baseball history.
Before the 2013 season, Hernandez voided the last two years of his contract and signed a seven-year extension worth $175 million, with a team option in 2020. At the time, this made him the highest paid pitcher in MLB history. On April 22nd, Hernandez recorded his 100th career win in a game against the Houston Astros. For the third straight season, he was selected to the All-Star Game, the fourth appearance of his career. He ended the season with a great stat line and he ranked 5th in the AL in strikeouts and 6th in ERA. 2014? That was something else. Yet again, Felix was an All-Star. Between May 18th and August 11th, Hernandez pitched 16 straight outings, going 7 or more innings and allowing 2 or fewer runs each start. This is the longest such streak in baseball history, surmounting the record previously held of 13 by Tom Seaver, set during the 1971 season. At the end of the season, Felix led the AL in ERA and WHIP which were actually the lowest since Pedro Martinez in 2000, though Felix finished second in the Cy Young race to Corey Kluber. 2015 would mark the end of King Felix's dominance, though on May 10th, 2015, against the Athletics, Hernandez recorded strikeout number 2000, becoming the fourth youngest player to reach that milestone. While he was an all-star, he was starting to show signs of regression, which can be highlighted through his stats. What an era of dominance it was, though. I want to highlight his consistency through these years. Despite several injuries through these years, from 2018 to 2015, he never pitched fewer than 200 innings. His total over those 8 seasons was 1,987, tying him with James Shields for the most innings pitched. Despite his near decade of dominance, there is a reason why 2015 marks the end of it. Between 2016 and 2019, Felix battled many injuries, which only pushed his regression. 2016 wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. He did record his 150th career win during the season. His 146th career win was notable as he passed Jamie Moyer for most wins as a Mariner. In 2017, Hernandez missed many starts due to shoulder problems, causing him to pitch only 86 and two-thirds innings throughout the whole season. In 2018, Hernandez made his 10th straight and last opening day start. Only three other pitchers have made more consecutive opening day starts. Unfortunately, this is one of Felix's worst seasons ever. He was removed from the rotation after his start on August 7th, where he allowed 11 runs in 6 innings. He returned to the rotation later in the month because of an injury to James Paxton. Looking at 2019, there is no way to sugarcoat this. It was the worst season of his career by far. He missed many starts due to injury, though on May 11th, there was a moment of light for Hernandez, when he reached the 2,500 strikeout milestone becoming the 6th youngest pitcher in Major League history to reach this milestone. At the end of the season, the Mariners would opt out of their team option, allowing Hernandez to become a free agent for the first time in his career. On January 20th, 2020, he signed with the Atlanta Braves on a minor league deal worth $1 million, officially ending his time in Seattle. Notice how I've just gone through Felix's whole career and I haven't mentioned the Mariners records at all. Well, here is a season-by-season -season comparison of Felix's stats and how the Mariners finished that season. Very few winning seasons. They never made the playoffs. Yet during his prime years, Felix was always the guy. The king. Hernandez never went to the big stage in October, but he was still called king. The lack of playoff success didn't define him. His individual stats and accomplishments, along with his character and demeanor, has defined Felix Hernandez as King Felix. How likely are King Felix's chances of getting into the Hall of Fame? Because of his last few seasons, it's not looking too likely. There is no question he was one of the best pitchers of the previous decade. This chart confirms that. However, when you look at this chart, you see why he will probably not make it. Johan Santana, who I will probably make a video on in the future, had a similar career to Hernandez. Though Santana won two Cy Young Awards and Hernandez won only one. Still, he only received 2.4% of the votes when he was on the ballot in 2018, which leaves him off the Hall of Fame ballot for good. What this shows is that your peak needs to last so much longer in order to stand a chance to make the Hall of Fame. King Felix may not make the Hall of Fame, but he represents something more than that. Through his prime, he represented a city. Despite all the losing seasons, he never left. He never demanded a trade. He loved everyone that supported him. Felix was once a scared kid in a foreign country who was learning English by watching cartoons, but he had heart. 
King Felix represents a section of Seattle history. He didn't need a crown to achieve that. Along with Ken Griffey Jr., Ichiro Suzuki, Russell Wilson, and Marshawn Lynch, Felix is an icon and a king of Seattle. Once again, I would like to thank SRS for having me on the channel. Again, my channel is SportStorm. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you checked out the videos on my channel. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.